Hello and welcome. Today we're working on understanding merchandising activities or companies that sell merchandise. So let's talk about merchandise companies. They sell inventory for a profit. They're retailers or wholesalers or manufacturers. Retailers buy and sell inventory. Uh, they might be a department store, a grocery store. Wholesalers might buy from the manufacturer and sell to the retailer. And then manufacturers create their own products. Now, inventory is an asset, and we have different stages of inventory. You might have raw materials. You might have items you're working on that are not finished yet called work in process, and you might have finished goods. Now, what do you sell? Generally, you sell finished goods or you sell inventory. And retailers just would buy these finished goods, and then that becomes their inventory to sell. Now, anytime we sell inventory, it's called cost of sales or cost of goods sold. You might have an abbreviation, COGS, COGS, or cost of revenue. So this is our largest cost generally for a retailer. And so this is an expense and it happens when you sell inventory. So think about what a retailer does or a merchandising company does. They buy inventory, they pay later on, maybe on accounts payable, they sell inventory, hopefully for more than what they paid for it, and then they receive cash on account receivable. So this is the inventory cycle, and you're always buying inventory, you're always trying to sell inventory, and you're paying cash and collecting cash, and you're trying to sell inventory for more than what you paid for it. So let's look at an income statement is gonna be different for a service company versus now a merchandising company. If you're in financial accounting, then so far you've only seen a real simple income statement. This is what the income statement is going to look like now in the future. You're going to have revenue or sales, and then you'll have cost of goods sold or cost of sales. And then if you should track that out, you're going to get gross profit. So let's do the problem here and we'll kind of explain as we go along. Let's say we sold 25 units, 2,500 units rather, at $15 each. So we're going to say 2,500 times $15. So our revenue or our sales is going to be 37,500. So how much did it cost us? Well, apparently it cost us $7 each, so 2,500 times seven. Our cost is 17,500. So we subtract that out, 37 minus 17 and we get 20,000. So our gross profit, just selling our products, we made $20,000. Now we have to pay for running the company, we have to pay for maybe insurance and um, depreciation and interest, and we also have to pay tax. So we have to do other things besides just selling our products. So we have to get uh, pay our employees and so on. So our G&A expenses, general and administrative expenses, would be the same thing as operating expenses. So our operating expenses are 11,000. So what is our operating profit? Well, 20,000 minus the 11. Our operating profit is gonna be 9,000. And then we have an other category. So sometimes you, you have, you maybe have extra investments and you have interest revenue or you have borrowed money and so you have interest expense. Here we have interest expense in the amount of $600. So this could be a plus or minus. So we wanna make sure we know this is a minus 600 is our interest expense. So what is our pre-tax profit? It's gonna be 9,000. I'm gonna add the negative 600 to make it subtract out, 8,400. So before we pay taxes, we made $8,400 and we say, our tax rate is right at 30%. So we'll take 8,400 times 0.3. So we're gonna pay taxes in the amount of 2520. So what is our net income? 8,400 minus the 2520. Our net income or net profit or net earnings is 5,880. 5,880 is our profit for the year, okay? So this is how a, a merchandising company income statement looks different. Let's talk about a couple of terms and we'll do some sample journal entries. Now, there's two inventory systems. There's the periodic and the perpetual. Periodic, if you 
keep everything like say monthly and you calculate cost of sales at the end of the period, that's periodic. Perpetual is much easier to do now that we have uh, technology. So cost of sales is calculated when it's sold. Now, a lot of times, most of the time, we're gonna have sales on account, so we'll buy and we, we owe the money in maybe 30 days or whatever. So if we buy from a supplier, they give us credit terms, and the credit terms would be something like 210 net 30. Well, that's just a shorthand that says 210 net 30, you get a 2% discount within 10 days, or the net, the total is due in 30. They say, we'll give you 30 days to pay, but if you'll pay within 10 days, we'll give you a 2% discount. That usually is very valuable, 2% for, for an extra, you know, you have to pay an extra 20 days early from day 10 to day 30. You pay on day 10, you get a 2% discount. It only saves you 20, um, you only pay 20 days early, right, from the day 30. So that can be very valuable. So you want to pay attention to that and calculate, can you pay that early? Can you take advantage of the discount? That's going to be very helpful. It could be 115 net 60. You get a 1% discount within 15 days. When is the total due? Well, it's due in 60 days. They give you two months to pay, but they'll say, we'll give you a 1% discount if you pay within 15 days. Now, there could be several combinations of this. They could give you 315 net 60. They could give you 215 net 45 or whatever. There's all sorts of ways to do it. If they don't give a discount, they would just say the terms are net 30. You just have to pay within 30 days. Now, shipping terms are helpful because you want to know who pays the shipping costs. So if they say, if the seller says FOB destination, then they say, hey, we're going to take care of the shipping costs. We'll just include that in the cost of the products. And the title passes when it's delivered. So if you have um, a company from Chicago and they're selling to a company in Atlanta and they load it on the truck and it, they drive it all the way to Atlanta, through a shipping company or whatever, when it's delivered is when the buyer owns the inventory. If they say FOB shipping point, then they say as soon as we load it on the truck, it becomes the buyer's inventory. So as soon as we load it on the truck in Chicago, we've done all we can do and it becomes your inventory. So therefore the buyer pays the shipping costs cost directly. Now you know the buyer pays the shipping cost regardless, right? They either pay one price, which is the, the total cost to the seller, or they pay the seller cost plus shipping cost. So shipping point and uh, destination are these terms. Now, FOB is just a acronym that means free on board, and that just says, hey, look, this is where the title passes, and this who pays, um, just to be clear, who pays for the shipping costs. Now, let's do some sample journal entries. And I've got a couple of purchases and a couple of sales entries uh, to make sure you know how this works. Our next video will have a, a more complete set of journal entries for buying and selling inventory. All right, we're going to use a perpetual system, so everything's going to affect inventory. So let's say we purchased uh, 1,000 units of inventory for $4,000 with credit terms 210 net 30. Probably 210 net 30 is the most common shipping terms, uh, credit terms rather. So let's just use that. So we're going to debit inventory and we're going to credit accounts payable. How much is our debit to inventory? Well, it's going to be $4,000 total and accounts payable we owe $4,000. So what does our inventory account look like? Well, our inventory account looks like $4,000 right now and the total is $4,000. Easy. Well, what if we pay the amount within 10 days? Now, if we pay the amount on day 20, then all we would do is just say accounts payable and cash. But we paid within the discount period. We paid within the 10 days, so we get a 2% discount. So how much do we owe? Well, we owe $4,000, and we're going to pay all that off. But they're going to give us a 2% discount. So what is that 2% discount? So 4000 times 0.02 we're going to save $80 if we pay by day 10. So we're going to actually reduce our inventory by $80. And how much do we actually have to pay? Well, if we get a 2% discount, we pay 98%. So I can take the 4,000 
times 0.98 and get 3,920. Or I could just simply subtract 4,000 minus 80 and you get 3,920. Same math, 4,000 minus the 80 is 3,920. So what is our real cost of inventory? What's our net cost of inventory? Well, our inventory started at 4,000 and we have a discount of 80. So it's on our books, whoops, it's on our books at 4,000 minus the 80, that's the 3920. So we have 1,000 items of inventory that really cost us 3,920. If you wanna do the math and divide it out, that's gonna cost us like $3.92. So let's do this. 3920 divided by 1,000 units. Our cost per unit is $3.92. All right, we're gonna sell these items so let's say we sold 700 of these items. Remember we had 1,000 items. And we're gonna sell 700 for $10 each with credit terms 210 net 30. We're gonna to sell to a company or to many companies and we're gonna give them credit terms of 210 net 30. So the first thing we have to do, there's two entries that we're gonna to have to make when we sell a product. Our first is what is our cost of sales? Okay, that's our expense. What's our cost of sales? Well, we know each one cost us $3.92. So I'm gonna take 700 times that 392. So our cost of sales is 2744. 2744, that's our cost of sales. And we're gonna reduce inventory by the same amount, 2744. So we have 2744 is our cost of sales, or you might call it cost of goods sold. What's our inventory here? Well, our inventory started at 4,000. We reduced it by 80, and now we've reduced it by 2744, right? We have a credit to inventory, right? So that reduces it. So what is the balance of inventory now? What's well, 4,000 minus the 80 minus the 2744? and that's 1176. If you took the 300 that we have not sold times the 392, the cost per unit, you would get 1176. So our inventory has gone up when we purchase it, it goes down when we get a, a discount, and it goes down when we sell it. So our inventory always stays in balance anytime we make an inventory transaction. All right, how much do they owe us? Well, we made a sale for 700 units times $10 each, so that's $7,000. So we have revenue sales or sales revenue. That's our revenue account. And then we set up an asset for 7,000. Now remember, what's the definition of revenue? Anytime you receive an asset because you sold a product or service. Here, we sold products and we received an asset called accounts receivable. We don't receive cash yet. If we received cash, we wouldn't have to give them credit terms, right? All right, so what happens if we collect cash from our customers on day nine? Now, they owe us $7,000, so our sales are $7,000. That's our revenue. Now, they owe us $7,000. We're going to credit accounts receivable $7,000 but we're not receiving the full 7,000. Why? Well, remember it's 210 net 30, we get a 2% discount. We're offering a 2% discount and they paid on day nine. We gave them 10 days to get that 2% discount. So how much sales discount do we have? Well, it's gonna be 7,000 times 0.02. We're gonna give them $140 of sales discount so how much cash did we collect? We collected the 7,000 minus the discount of 140. We collected 6,860. So this sales discount is gonna be a debit 140. So our balance of sales is 7,000. Our balance of sales discount is 140. Now, sales and sales discount, they go together. Sales is a revenue account. Sales discount is a contra account 
that reduces the balance of sales. So what is our net sales? Our net sales is going to be 7,000 minus the 140. So our net sales are 6860. That's how much cash we collected, right? But you take sales minus sales discounts and that gives you net sales. All right, the last thing we want to do is what is our gross profit or our, what's our gross margin? So what are our net sales? We just calculated net sales to be 6860. What is our cost of goods sold or what's our cost of sales? Well, that's up here. Our cost of goods sold is the 2744, right? I'm going to use that the balance. I need to put that in there 2744. So what is our gross profit? Well, 6860 minus 2744. We made a profit just on selling those items of 4116. Then we have to take out all our other expenses to get our net income. But the first step is you need to make a gross profit. So this is how inventory works when you buy and sell inventory, merchandising activities. Our next video will do a complete set of buying and selling inventory so you understand how it works. Hey, thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Please like if it's helpful for you. Please subscribe and we'll see you on the next video. Good luck in accounting.